Welcome to Sci-Fi Frontier. I'm Dominic. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Nemesis and Nemesis 4. So now why am I going to be doing the first and the fourth movie is because they have the first one and the fourth one on Amazon Prime. And I watched them both back to back last night. So if you don't know anything about Nemesis, Nemesis is a movie that came out in 1993 and it's a science fiction action movie and it was directed by Albert Pion. Now you might know him from what he's most famous for is Van Damme's Cyborg that came out in the late 80s. And this is kind of a similar movie to Cyborg. It involves like a lot of cyborgs and that kind of like that genre of cyberpunk cyborg type thing. And Albert Pion done a lot of movies like that, like a lot of like movies that take place in like a post-apocalyptic future and involve cybernetics and cyborgs and androids and all that kind of stuff. So the movie stars Oliver Grunner and he did a lot of uh, action movies in the 90s and stuff. And every time I saw him in an action movie, what he always reminded me of was like an off-brand Jean-Claude Van Damme. Like a movie that was an action movie, they didn't have enough money to get Jean-Claude Van Damme. Okay, we can't afford him, but we can get this guy who's kind of close. That's what I always thought of when I seen one of his movies uh, as a teenager in the 90s. So uh, now just to give a plot rundown of the movie. Uh, in this world, in the future, it takes place in 2034. And uh, there is a group of renegade terrorists, of, like renegade cyborgs called the Red Army Hammerheads. And they have been labeled as terrorists. So Oliver Grunner plays a character, Alex Rain, and he's a cop, basically. His job is to hunt these down. So this movie is kind of like a Blade Runner slash Terminator knockoff. So his job is to hunt down these renegade cyborgs. So the movie starts off with that. And uh, so he's hunting them down, but they he gets surrounded and they all just basically blast the crap out of him. And then he gets repaired uh, but he, wanted to get, he wants to get revenge on these hammerheads. So he tracks down the leader of them after he gets repaired and kills the leader. And then he retires. He doesn't want to be a cop no more. And he kind of retires and he ends up kind of going into the underworld as like a, um, as a smuggler. And that's going to be his retirement job. He's going to be a smuggler for the underworld after being a cop. But there's one mission they want him to do one last mission that they uh, decided he's a guy for the job. So they he doesn't want it though, but they capture him and force him to go on this mission by putting a bomb inside of his body that's going to explode in three days. And his mission is to take out the leader of the Red Army Hammerheads, uh, this leader of this cyborg uh, renegade group, this faction. So that's the plot. Now, uh, the movie is uh, what I like about the movie is it has really crazy gunfighting in this film. Uh, the movie uh, does a really good job of this um, compared to other movies at the time. Now, there's been a lot more wilder gunfights since then. But for the time, this was pretty wild. Like, the guys got, all the guys got big, huge machine guns. They did, Everything just gets blasted to crap, and there's explosions everywhere. So, like, one scene that is pretty cool in this movie that I like is he's in this old crappy hotel building and he's all these guys that want to kill him they're all coming in with these big huge guns all these like evil cyborg guys so his only way out is he takes his machine gun and he blasts a hole around the floor where he's standing so basically he uses his machine guns to cut a hole in the floor that he's standing on so it'll fall down to the next floor so he keeps doing that going floor by floor by floor blasting his way down until he gets to the main floor and he can escape so that was pretty cool. It was kind of like a cheesy action moment, but it was pretty cool. And the other thing I kind of thought was cool is there was like an evil cyborg guy whose face would open up and a gun would pop out of his eye and he could shoot you like that. So like really, really wild stuff like that in there. And uh, it's got a lot of actors in it that you would recognize from other B-movies. And it's actually has Thomas Jane in the movie. And he, uh, he always, he's only got a bit part, but... He's, he's pretty much like you wouldn't recognize him at all. He's really young and even his voice sounds different. So I seen this movie like years ago and but never knew he was in it until I went reading through all the movies he did on his IMDb and then saw he was in this and like thought, oh, really? He was in this? So but the so those are the things about that are pretty good. 
And for like a B movie, the special effects aren't bad for the time that it came out and considering the budget it has, it's not bad. It's This movie isn't as good as say Jean-Claude Van Damme's Cyborg, but it's very close in my opinion on the same level of quality almost. Like they're very close. Like Nemesis is a step down, but a very small step down. And uh, now the other thing I was kind of disappointed in with this film is Oliver Grunner is a pretty good martial artist, but there's very little martial arts in this movie. Like he does, there's not much hand-to-hand -hand combat in this. It's all uh, gunfights in this movie. So it would have been cool if they had thrown in some more martial arts. And as for action, there's a lot of action. And it wastes no time getting into the action, this movie. Uh, so that's the cool thing. It, it clips along pretty fast. There's, there's lots of action. Now, the other thing about this movie I didn't really, I thought was odd though, is it's kind of got this weird sense of humor. Like there's a scene where one of the cyborg guys is trying to interrogate this old woman on the street and uh, asking her if she knows the location of this Alex Rain guy that they're hunting. And she keeps telling him she doesn't know what he's talking. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So the cyborg just kind of lets her go in and then laughs and then turns around. It's almost like he's going out of his way to bully this old woman. And he turns around and leaves, and then she pulls a big huge gun out of her handbag and blows him to pieces. And then, uh, you know, then she makes some kind of, says some kind of line, oh, you can't walk the streets now without having to deal with one of these damn cyborgs. So the main character, Alex Rain, he sees this and he kind of gets a chuckle out of it. So it's this weird humor that's put in there, uh, just kind of randomly uh, thrown in the movie. Also, there's a subplot in this movie that goes nowhere. And it, it was so pointless to the movie, it made me really made me wonder why they even put it in there. So the subplot involves a dog. So at the beginning of the movie, when he gets all blown up and blasted, they shoot a rocket at him, and the place area he's in, he finds a small husky pup. So he puts the husky dog inside this little metal box and protects it from the explosion. So when he gets repaired, he takes the dog, and now the dog's his companion, and he uh, has the dog with him when he goes, and the dog's full grown when it goes to the next scene after he's been repaired, and he has even more cybernetic implants to repair his body. He's, he goes to a small town because he wants to wipe out the leader of the Hammerheads that basically, I think, that, that ordered the people to kill him. So he's going to go kill her and get revenge on now on what they did to him because now he's even less human. He's got more cybernetic implants. So she's at the small bar. He goes to the small bar and he takes his dog with him. He has his dog with him. And uh, so he finds her, he shoots her, and he shoots her bodyguard. So they kind of get into a quick gunfight in this bar, kills them both. And uh, then his dog like vanishes. So I'm, as I'm watching the scene, the dog was beside him, then the dog is just instantly gone. So I'm thinking, now, where is the dog? And then two cops show up, two cyber cybernetic cops show up that he used to work for and they're trying to recruit him for this mission but he uh, refuses he doesn't want anything to do with it and now the one cop is his former lover and uh, he's all mad at her and he doesn't want anything to do with her but he's just telling her look he said I doesn't I'm, I'm retired now I had my revenge I'm done and uh, he says you know I've lost so much of my humanity you know I don't, I don't want anything to do with this lifestyle so he leaves and he walks back to his room. But when he's walking back to his room, I notice his dog isn't with him. So I'm thinking, well, where's his dog? Where did this dog go? It was like distracting me from the movie, wondering, where is this dog? So then the dog is, then they, then they show the dog. The dog is still in the bar. And the dog is growling at these two cyborg cops that are women. And so the one cyborg cop, the one woman, uh, she goes to pet the dog, but the dog bites her puts her hand out towards this dog and the dog bites her kind of does some damage to her cybernetic hand so then she just pulls out her sidearm and blows the dog away kills the dog and then there's a very quick scene that shows him burying his dog on a hill and puts a little cross there and then that's it like i'm thinking okay is this gonna go somewhere does this come up again something about this dog like is he gonna get revenge for his dog is he gonna face off against this female cyborg again later on in the film and kill her to get revenge for his dog but you never see that female cyborg again ever for the rest of the movie so i'm thinking well what was the point of this dog like it's just put in the film for no point at all like just to show that he kind of does have a softer side but i don't know it, it was to me it was a plot point that was stupid and it distracted me from the movie and went nowhere it's kind of like they decided okay we're gonna put a dog in this movie and then 
halfway through, they decide, okay, now we don't want a dog, so we'll just, instead of just writing the dog out, they decided to film a quick scene where the dog gets killed off. So anyway, that, that kind of really bugged me. Uh, but my overall thoughts on this film is, uh, besides my problems with it, it's a pretty good action movie. It's, uh, it's got really wild gunfights. And as far as these type of movies goes, these B movies, it's pretty good. It's, it's watchable. It's definitely watchable. And it's one of those movies that I would watch again just for cheesy fun and, uh, if you like Cyborg, you would probably like this movie. So that I would definitely recommend to give this one at least a watch once. So now the next movie I'm going to be talking about is Nemesis 4, Cry of Angels. So now um, there were they made four of these Nemesis movies in the 90s. And so they never got Oliver Grunner back for any of these movies. So uh, what's interesting, though, is you can watch... Because I watched two of these back-to-back -back last night, as I said. You can watch the first one, and you can watch four. And four actually makes a pretty good sequel, storyline-wise, to the first film. And you don't even need to see two and three. So in this movie, uh, it stars Sue Price. And she was a bodybuilder uh, slash actress. And I checked her IMDb. She only did like a few Nemesis movies, small bits here and there. But she plays a character in the film called Alex Sinclair. No relation to Alex Rain from the first movie. And uh, so the, basically the story of this movie is it's 80 years after the first film. And uh, there was a huge war between humans and cyborgs. And this movie takes place after that war. So the war is over and uh, humans and cyborgs have come to like there's peace among the two groups and uh but there's a lot of like underworld stuff going on there's a lot of crime in this world it's kind of like a bit of a dystopian future and uh so alex sinclair is a cyborg mutant and she's a hired for gun hit woman in this future that works for this uh like guy who who kind of runs Runs a company of hit people, basically. He like go, he like puts out the jobs. He like gives people the jobs. So she works for him, and her job is she has to go kill this guy, assassinate this guy, and she he tells her her mark is going to be wearing um, a white carnation flower, and then he has a thing. He's like uh, he he's he's like a he's kind of like has like a lot of sick fetishes. This guy so. Her whole thing of how she kills people, she seduces all of her people that she's going to kill and then basically kills them just before performing or in the midst of performing like a sexual act kind of thing. That's how she kills them all. And that's her way of killing all of her targets. So she gets this guy with the white uh, flower and then she takes him back and then kills him. But it turns out to be the wrong guy. It's actually the son of a really powerful crime lord. So now there's a huge mark on her head. All these bounty hunters are after her. So then now she has to survive. And now plot spoilers. Uh, not that I think anyone's going to care about this film, but plot spoilers it turned out to be a double cross. She was set up to intentionally kill the wrong guy. So then the main guy that she works for can collect this huge bounty on on her death. It's, it's kind of a convoluted plot, but... Um, that's, that's basically the plot. But she ex but she gets away in the end and kills the guy who double-crossed her and all that kind of stuff and lives heavily ap lives happily ever after. So uh, that's basically the story. So now this movie is like really cheap. They made this movie like super, super cheap. Like Nemesis is a cheap film, but as far as everything is a huge drop with this movie. Story-wise, it's a huge drop. drop uh, Special effects wise, it's a huge drop acting wise everything. It's only got like a handful of actors in it And they shot it in a place that looks like very run down, but I don't know where it was It's like a like in the scene There's like a lot of old churches and stuff like that and this is supposed to be like future Los Angeles, but it's very run down looking and Basically they shot the whole movie on like a one. Uh, it looks like they shot the whole movie on one street That's it and it's very like has a very 
closed in feel to it because there's there's no scope to it it's all just one location and uh it's and even the gunfire is like they didn't use blanks it's just like animated gunfire and it looks really bad it looks terrible uh and there is no hand-to-hand -hand combat in this movie or very very little of it and there's actually not a lot of gunfire in this movie either for a movie that's supposed to be an action movie the only good thing about it it's short it's like an hour and 15 minutes so it's you don't have to suffer through it long now the thing about this movie is uh the main actress is pretty much naked the whole movie so the first guy she kills he's like a cyborg guy uh, her, the guy that she was sent to kill the guy who turns out to be the wrong merc she basically uh kills him between her thighs in a scissors hole and then she does that to two guys in this film. And then, uh, but every time she goes to kill someone, her she ends up naked, kills them. And then she has like a little skimpy white dress that she takes off and puts on uh, throughout the film. And then that that's, it's like the whole movie was built around her being naked. It's like they, okay, we need an excuse. Okay, we got this, you know, this female bodybuilder. We're going to show her naked. Now let's make a movie around that and call it Nemesis 4. That's what that's what i got so so this first movie nemesis was you know a pretty uh fun cyborg action science science fiction b movie now this movie is basically in my opinion it's nothing more than a fetish film uh so this movie is uh basically the only thing i can see this movie would be made for people who are into femdom and female muscle worship there's, those are two fetishes that that feed into this movie, or that that's in this movie. That I think that that's what the movie was made for, is just to feed somebody's fetish. I don't know, maybe the filmmaker or whatever, because every excuse it can to show this woman, and she's not like conventional hot. Okay, she's like a really super ripped bodybuilder, uh, the Sue Price. Like she's not small. So, and that's not like a mainstream uh, beauty standard, I guess, in movies. Like, uh, more of a mainstream beauty standard, I guess, would be... That would have a more broader appeal would be someone like Scarlett Johansson or Kate Beckinsdale. When you see a movie with, like, a bodybuilder like this in it, this would be now you're getting more in, like, fetish territory because of how ripped she is. So that's the only audience I can see that this movie was made for. So, uh, it, it, so can I recommend it? No, it's crap. It's garbage. It's a really terrible movie. It is absolute garbage. So they made... Uh, after they made Nemesis, they made two more sequels, Nemesis 2 and 3, and they both star Sue Price. Well, those two sequels are about... They're a drop down from the first Nemesis in quality, but they're on par with each other, 2 and 3, because they were actually filmed back to back, or they just took all the parts from all of all, whatever was left on the cutting room full floor from part two and they made part three and they both star Sue Price. They never, ever got Oliver Grunner back. But, uh, now this last one is just really bad, like really bad. Even compared to two and three, it's really bad. They, they really dropped it down. Like the quality really dropped. So it's, yeah, it, it's a really terrible movie. And, uh, yeah, I can't recommend it. And if you're going to watch the Nemesis movie, just watch the first one. It's all you need to watch. You don't need to watch any of the sequels because continuity-wise, they're very badly connected. Like, they don't make any sense story-wise, so you don't really need it. Like, the continuity's not very good. Like, this one has nothing to do with 2 and 3, and there's no explanation of how the character got to this point, or even if it is the same character. Like, it doesn't really make sense. So, yeah, so... Uh, that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. Thank you to all of my subscribers, and thank you for watching this video. And if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification when new videos are uploaded.